Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I want to look at and analyze what it means when the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, let all of your prayer and supplication be in the Spirit. What does that mean? Is the Apostle Paul saying that all of my prayer and our prayers should be praying in tongues in an unknown language as given direction and utterance by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? Or are we supposed to pray in the Spirit in our known language as we feel led and directed by the Spirit? Is it unknown tongues? Is it known tongues? Is it talking in tongues? Is it talking in our earthly known languages? What did the Apostle Paul mean? And what was he telling us? If it is talking in tongues, then what is even talking in tongues? What does that mean biblically? Well, I've got wonderful news. The Bible is beautiful in the fact that it will interpret itself. And the Apostle Paul himself actually answers this question of whether he is talking about letting your prayer and supplication be by speaking in tongues or whether he's talking about praying in known tongues or your known language. The Apostle Paul answers the question himself. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So the first thing that I want to do is go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 14 to build a little bit of context of what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Listen to verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So putting this in context, the Apostle Paul has just walked us through what is considered and called the weapons of our warfare. To put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, letting your feet be girded with the shoes of the gospel of peace, taking the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In other words, he is painting a context of a soldier or a warrior that is going into a battle. And I want to highlight this to you that when he says, let your prayer and your supplication be in the spirit, then it is no different than the war language or the prayer language or the war tongue of the warrior himself. In other words, he just told you how to gird yourself and what to take, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of the salvation, etc. And now he's telling you as a warrior, how to talk, and he's telling you to let your war tongue or your prayer language be in the spirit. Now, one reason that people get confused and hung up over this phrase, in the spirit, and what does that actually mean, is because the Apostle Paul actually uses this phrase in several other places in several other ways. For example, he said to walk in the spirit, to live in the Spirit, and to worship in the Spirit. And so people say, well, he was telling you to do all of these things then as directed by the Lord or led by the Lord. So when it comes to praying in the Spirit, then he must simply mean as you're directed by the Lord. However, in this video, we want to address what exactly did he mean when he said to pray in the Spirit, and let all of your supplications be in the Spirit, because the Apostle Paul gives us the answer specifically about what he's meaning. So I'm not going to focus on worshiping in the Spirit, or walking in the Spirit, or living in the Spirit. We want to address how are we to pray or supplicate in the Spirit. What does that mean? What do we say? Do we talk in tongues in unknown languages? Do we pray in known languages as we're led by the Spirit? What do we do? And like I said, the Bible interprets itself. 
So now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, where the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and the Apostle Paul will give us the answer of what he meant when he said for you to pray in the Spirit. Verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit or however, in the Spirit, uh-oh, there's that phrase, in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Brothers and sisters, this is the Apostle Paul himself writing and talking, and when it comes to the phrase, in the Spirit, he is telling you right here, right now, how this phrase is to be interpreted. And we're going to look at more verses, but let's go through this very slowly and dissect it bit by bit to make sure that we understand what the Apostle Paul is saying. Because he says right here that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, how be it, or however, in the Spirit. Did you see that? In the Spirit is connected directly to talking in tongues or unknown languages. Now let's break this down slowly to make sure that we all understand and see and interpret correctly what the Apostle Paul is saying. Those two words, that phrase, unknown tongue, is one Greek word, G-1100, the Greek word glossa. This means speech or language. It's not a tongue like in somebody's mouth, the physical tongue in their mouth. It is talking about the language or the speech of a certain people. In other words, you may have heard the phrase, what is your mother tongue? In other words, glossa, is talking about a language. And the reason that it is unknown to the person or the speaker or even the hearers is because it is not a learned language. It's not something that the person knows or understands intellectually, and we will see that in a minute. Now, the first thing that I want to do is it says, he that speaketh. Everybody say, he that speaketh. Come on, say it. He that speaketh. So in other words, the person is talking or speaking out loud, and this is in conjunction to prayer, so this person is talking or speaking in prayer, okay? Now let me ask you this, how or what is the person speaking in? What were they speaking in? It says right there, in an unknown tongue. So let me ask you, what were they speaking in? Were they speaking in a known tongue or an unknown tongue? Was it known or unknown? Okay, let me ask you another question. Who is the speaking person talking to? This person that's talking in unknown tongues, in tongues, are they talking to God or are they talking to people? Is it God or people? Which one is it? The Apostle Paul gave you the answer. He said, they speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So Paul is sitting here telling you that when a person is talking in unknown tongues, they are actually speaking to God, not people. Okay, here's another question. How come they're talking to God and not talking to man? Because the apostle Paul gives us the answer. How come they're talking to God and not talking to man? Because Paul said, for no man understandeth him, which shows us beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is an unknown tongue or an unknown language because nobody understands him and therefore the person is talking directly to God. Okay, now for the big one. How is the person speaking and talking out loud directly to God and not talking to other people? How is the person talking to God? The Apostle Paul gives us the answer. He said, how be it, or however, 
in the Spirit. That is the exact same phrase that the Apostle Paul already used from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, when he said, let all of your prayer and all of your supplication be in the Spirit. And now right here, the Apostle Paul is making it crystal clear and letting Scripture interpret Scripture that when the Apostle Paul said, I want you to pray, and when you pray, you talk, when you talk and when you speak, I want you to do it in a unknown tongue or an unknown language. The Apostle Paul is actually telling you to let all of your prayer and all of your supplication be by talking and speaking in unknown tongues directly to the Lord. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute. But first, let me finish up with one last question. When this person is talking in tongues, in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, what is being said? The Apostle Paul said, he speaketh mysteries. That word for mysteries right there is the Greek word G3466, mysterion, which means a secret which would remain such but for revelation. Hidden, not fully known, secret, mystery, not obvious to understanding. Now you're about to see how all of this ties together. So please stick with me because this is beautiful and amazing to me. But let's skip down and go down to verse 13 and continue on with what the Apostle Paul says. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Those two words, unknown tongue, again, is the same Greek word G1100 glossa, meaning an unknown or unlearned language. And the Apostle Paul here says, you need to pray that you may interpret what the unknown tongue or unknown language was. All right, now let's go to verse 14 because this is going to help solidify and bring everything together. The Apostle Paul says in verse 14, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth but my understanding is unfruitful. Boom! Did you see the first part of that verse? He said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. That phrase, I pray in an unknown tongue, the Apostle Paul is telling you right here what he meant from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, and how he was speaking in an unknown tongue in verse 2 and verse 13 here now culminates and he says that I pray in unknown tongues. In other words, when he said to pray in the Spirit, he was actually talking about praying in the Holy Ghost in other languages in unknown tongues as given direction and utterance by the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. That phrase Unknown tongue right there is the same Greek word, G1100 glossa, that we already saw. So the Apostle Paul here is saying that when I'm talking about speaking in prayer, I am talking about speaking in unknown tongues or unknown languages. So he says right here, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, I've got to jump in here for a moment to talk to you about something because this is very critical and important. The Apostle Paul said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. Now, let me rearrange this to help you understand what the Apostle Paul is actually saying. He is actually saying that when my spirit prays, it manifests or comes forth as tongues or unknown languages. In other words, the language of my spirit is actually talking in tongues. What do I mean? And what did the apostle Paul mean? The Bible makes it emphatically clear that you are a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body. Now listen to me very carefully because I'm about to make some things very clear to you. 
when you are speaking in your known language, a language that you have learned in a culture, through school, whatever, however you learned a language, that language is in your mind, in your intellect, in your brain. And you may be fluent or not fluent depending on how learned and how skilled you are in your mind to memorize all the nuances of that language. That is your known language. Your known language is the language of your soul, not your spirit. If you know a language, whether it's Spanish, English, Japanese, Chinese, whatever known language that you know, you can fabricate and manufacture and make sentences and put it together in coherent speech. It is a language, learned language of the soul, of the mind. That's important. Because when it comes to the unknown language or speaking in tongues, the Apostle Paul here says that's actually the language of your spirit. So if you want to know the language that your spirit is actually speaking in, it is the language that you speak in when you start speaking in tongues as given utterance and direction by the Holy Ghost. In other words, let me say it like this, and maybe this will help you. Realize that when words or languages as a spiritual being come out of your mouth, it can come from one or two sources. For example, right now, I am speaking to you in my known language, which is English, which I went to school for, and my parents taught me. All my friends, we all talked English. That is embedded in my mind, and therefore, English is the known language of my soul. However, when my spirit starts praying, my spirit is praying in tongues, unknown languages, and that is the language of my spirit. So when languages come out of me, they can either come, I want you to picture it as two sources, the source of the soul and the source of the spirit. When there are languages coming out of my soul, they're coming out in a known language that I have in my mind, in my intellect, because it's part of my soul. When a language comes from the source of my spirit, it is manifesting in tongues because the Apostle Paul says, when I pray in an unknown language, an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What he's talking about, the understanding being unfruitful, is the soul is not fruitful. In other words, his spirit is speaking a language that his soul has never learned, his soul has never acquired, and that language is not in the database of his known languages for his intellect to pull on. Otherwise, it wouldn't even be an unknown language. It would be a known language. That word, understanding, is the Greek word G3563, nous, which means mind, the organ of mental perception and apprehension, the seat of emotions and affections, mode of thinking and feeling, intelligent understanding. And in fact, a way that I could explain this is when you are speaking in an unknown tongue or an unknown language, is no different than if an angel appeared before you and started speaking in some kind of language of angels that the Apostle Paul also talked about. And if you did not understand that, then you, it would be because you didn't have it in your soul. You had not learned it. You don't know what it means. And you would have to have the spiritual interpretation to know what the angel was actually saying if he was talking to you in a language that is not in your soul, not a learned language. No different if you go to another country and people are talking in another language that you don't even know what they're saying. You don't know because you never put it in your data bank. You never learned it. It's not a language of your soul or of your mind or of your intellect. And therefore, to you, it's an unknown language. And it has to be interpreted for it to be understood, which is why the Apostle Paul went on in the very next verse and said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. 
I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. And I want you to notice that the Apostle Paul said there in verse 15 that I will pray with the Spirit. In other words, I'm going to pray in the Spirit, with the Spirit, talking in tongues, talking in unknown tongues. Why? Because the Apostle Paul is trying to let you know and understand, look, it is way, way more important for you to talk by the Spirit, through the Spirit, in tongues, speaking mysterion or revelation from the Lord that is bypassing your brain because your brain does not know everything. Your intellect does not know everything. You only know the things that you received and were able to retain. There's things that you learned that you've already forgotten and don't even remember anymore. But when you are praying in the Spirit, the Spirit part of you is a awesome, intelligent, eternal, non-dying entity that will never die. It will either spend eternity in heaven or it will spend eternity in hell, one or the other, because you're not even going to die. The problem we have is our fallen, broken down, carnal, lust-driven soul and our fallen, broken down emotions and mind and will and intellect. And the Apostle Paul said the way to get around this is to pray in tongues in the Holy Ghost. And then you can receive all this mystery and revelation and things that your brain does not know and receive it from the Holy Ghost and it's put in your spirit. And then you need to pray that you can interpret what your spirit just said so that it can then filter back and get back into your soul, into your mind, which is normally our primary driver in how we function, going to school, going in our daily chores, doing all of the things that we normally do, we are normally primarily operating in the soul, the soulish realm, the mind, the intellect. And the Apostle Paul is saying, look, do all of your praying and do all of your supplications, do all of your speaking and talking to God in the Holy Ghost because you are speaking things that are bypassing the limitations of your mind, the limitations of your brain. You can be praying for somebody in China by the Spirit that you don't even know that's about to step in front of a vehicle and the Holy Ghost is praying through you to save that person. You could be praying for somebody in Africa that you don't even know and have never even heard of them. And the Holy Ghost is using your spirit to pray for that person in Africa. And your brain is in neutral, kicked completely out of the way. And the Holy Ghost is praying through you, mysterion or revelations or things that your mind does not know. And that is why the Apostle Paul said, therefore, you need to pray that you can get the interpretation of what it was that your spirit just said. And I literally do this myself. Sometimes I'll be walking alone. So see, it just happened to me. I didn't even try to make that happen. It just happened. And why that happens is because I have talked in tongues for so many years that it's easy for me to go and fluctuate between whether I'm talking from my soul or whether I'm talking from my spirit. And I pray lots in the spirit and praying by the Holy Ghost as the Holy Ghost directs me because I've learned that it's much better and more effective for the kingdom of God for me to pray from my spirit, praying revelations that my brain does not know and then what happens is then I begin to pray for the interpretation. Okay, Spirit, what did you just say? Spirit of God and my spirit, what, what just came out of me? What did y'all just say? And then I'll start praying for the interpretation. And it may not be instantaneous, but at some other point in time, I will get a revelation or something will click to me. And what it was, was my brain, my intellect, my soul got the revelation of what my spirit actually received from the Lord in the spiritual realm. Do you see why this is incredible and powerful and why the Apostle Paul was saying, let all of your prayers, let all of your supplications be in the spirit or speaking in unknown tongues and unknown languages because it is the language of your spirit in direct communication to God, not somebody over here, not somebody that needs an interpretation over there, 
but it is you talking directly to God, receiving impartations, downloads, revelations, and things that you need to know or someone else needs to know, and you need to get it into your soul or your mind so that you can process it through a known language to somebody and give them the interpretation through a known language. And to show you exactly what I'm talking about, how the soul is limited and does not know and understand, the Apostle Paul again also interprets his own letters and his own writings to tell you exactly what he means. Because when you go to Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself or himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Notice what the Apostle Paul said. We know not what we should pray for as we ought. And that goes back to exactly what I've been saying this whole time. Your soul does not know. And the Apostle Paul, again, is emphatically trying to let you know, look, the reason that the Spirit tries to bypass your soul all the time is because you don't even know how to pray for as you ought. And therefore, I want you to pray in the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues and speaking unknown tongues, which are revelations or mysteries to you because your brain does not even know to pray for this person over there, to pray for this situation that's about to happen, to pray for something that you're going to be in next week. Your brain doesn't even have a clue. Your mind, it's not even on your radar. And Paul was saying, look, I am trying to emphatically tell you over and over and over to pray in the Holy Ghost, to pray in tongues, to pray in unknown languages, to let all of your prayer and all of your supplication be in the Spirit because the Spirit maketh intercession for you with groanings and moanings which cannot be uttered. That word for intercession right there is the Greek word G5241, who parentano, which means for or on the behalf of someone, to plead for someone on behalf of. In other words, the Holy Ghost is pleading on behalf of you or someone you love or care about or someone that you don't know but might be in the kingdom of God and the Holy Ghost is trying to intercede through you because your brain, and I know I'm saying this over and over, but your brain, your soul, your mind does not even know how to pray because it's contaminated by lust-driven, carnal, broken-down human flesh and soul and emotions and problems and issues and desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and your soul is the issue and the problem. And the Apostle Paul is trying to say, look, your spirit's been quickened and made fresh and made anew, and you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Therefore, you ought to pray in the warrior tongue and the warrior language of the kingdom of God and the spirit of God, which is the language of your spirit, not your soul. That's why the Apostle Paul tied it into praying in the Spirit in conjunction with the weapons and the battle armor of our warfare, the belt, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, etc., because it is as a soldier and a warrior and a child of God, it is your prayer language, your prayer tongue, the language of your Spirit talking directly to God. Let's look at verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This goes right back to what I've been saying, that when you pray in tongues and the Holy Ghost, your spirit is praying by the unction and direction of the Holy Ghost, literally in the Spirit when you're praying in tongues. And the Holy Ghost is making intercession through you when you pray in tongues because it's bypassing your soul, bypassing your known languages and all of your nouns and verbs and adverbs and adjectives of some language 
that you would have to try to think and process. And the Holy Ghost is like, uh-uh, hold on, stop. Get that out of the way. I don't even need your brain right now. I need your spirit. Let me talk through your spirit and let's have a direct communication right now. And I'm going to borrow your mouth and your vocal cords and your spirit right now. And I'm going to pray through you right now because I know what the will of God is and I know what needs to be done. And just as I bring this to a close, let's look at a few verses in John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. That word for comforter is the Greek word G3875. Parakletos, some people pronounce it parakletos, but I say parakletos. It means one who comes forward in behalf of and as the representative of another. It also means one who pleads another's cause before a judge. Summoned, called to one's aid, to comfort, encourage, or exhort, legal assistant or advocate, counsel or defense, an intercessor. So this is what the comforter, this parakletos, is going to do. He's somebody coming alongside of you to aid you, to help you, call to your aid, a legal assistant, an advocate, coming alongside to help you. So who is this comforter that's going to come? John 14, 26 says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. God bless you. What is my takeaway out of this video? That when the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 6, 18, to let all of your prayer and supplication be in the Spirit, when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and then eventually to Romans chapter 8, that it is talking about praying in tongues, which is the language of your spirit. In other words, bypassing your mind, your intellect, your soul, and letting the source of all of your prayer come from the spirit as directed by God. Why? Because your spirit is the eternal, intellectual, uncontaminated, unblemished, unbroken part of you if you've been born again. And speaking in tongues is the language of your spirit talking directly to God, not unto man. When you are talking in tongues, you are speaking mysterion or revelation from the Lord, and it is you communicating directly to God. So yes, when the Apostle Paul said, let all of your prayer be in the spirit, it is talking in tongues, obviously, as directed as the Lord allows you and gives you. I pray this video has been a blessing to you. If you want to check out other things about gifts of the Spirit, talking in tongues, I've got other videos about that. You can check those out. Thank you for sticking with me in this video. I pray it's been a blessing to you. I want you to know I love and appreciate you. God bless you. I love you. You pray for me, and I'll be praying for you. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.